Remember that the indicating thermometer gives you the accurate milk temperature. But to be sure the recording thermometer is also accurate, compare it with the indicating thermometer once during pasteurization, usually after the milk has been at pasteurizing temperature for about 10 minutes. Write the indicating thermometer temperature on the recording chart as a permanent record. If there is a difference between the two readings, the recording thermometer should be adjusted before it is used again. Other important facts are entered on the chart. The airspace temperature is sometimes added. If anything unusual happens, such as a power failure, make a note of it on the back of the chart. As pasteurization continues, frequently check the indicating thermometer and the airspace thermometer. If they show the temperatures of the milk or airspace are too low or too high, adjust the steam valves to maintain correct temperatures. Pasteurization requires time as well as temperature. The milk has been held for a full 30 minutes at 143 degrees or more. It is now pasteurized. All disease bacteria have been killed. It is safe milk. From now on, great care must be taken to prevent recontamination. Turn off the steam to the jacket and to the airspace heater. Turn on the cold water to the jacket to start cooling the milk. The cold water enters here, mixes with the water in the jacket, and runs out through this overflow pipe. Turn on the water jacket circulating pump and leave the agitator running. The recording thermometer chart records the prompt cooling of the milk in the vat. At the end of the 30 minute holding time, the pen arm drops as the temperature of the milk is lowered by the cold water in the jacket. In some plants, the milk is not cooled in the vat. In such cases, the recording thermometer continues to show the milk at pasteurizing temperature during the additional time it takes to empty the vat and expose the thermometer bulb. And the chart must show 30 minutes holding time plus the emptying time. But regardless of the cooling method used, the milk must be kept in the vat a full 30 minutes at at least 143 degrees before the outlet valve is opened. When the milk has been cooled to about 120 degrees, about as low as cold water will cool it, open the outlet valve on the pasteurizer, adjust the valve in the line, and turn on the pump. The milk flows from the pasteurization vat to the pump. Through a flow control valve. And onto the cooler. The cooler is always kept covered while in use. These covers fit tightly at the sides. They overlap at the top and cover the collection trough at the bottom. The covers prevent contamination of the pasteurized milk by accidental coughing, sneezing, or flies and dust. This cooler is built in two separate sections. Cold water circulates through the top section and brine through the bottom. The ends of the coils, called headers, are specially constructed so that moisture condensing on their cold surfaces cannot drip into the milk. The space between the headers is well over one quarter inch 
to permit cleaning. The bottom of the header is designed so that moisture will not drip into the milk in the collection trough. As the milk flows in a thin film over the cooler, it is chilled to well below 50 degrees. Prompt cooling is important because it prevents the growth of bacteria. Always keep the cooler covered while milk is being cooled. The milk flows from the cooler to the bottle filler. The supply pipe has a shield or apron to prevent moisture on the cold pipe from running down into the milk in the bowl of the filler. Always keep the sight hole covered while the filler is in use. The filler valves are also protected by diverting aprons to prevent condensation from falling into the milk bottles. Be sure your hands are clean before you handle bottles and caps. This wash basin is located conveniently in the pasteurization room and has hot and cold water, soap, and sanitary towels. Bottle caps are stored in a clean, dry cabinet which protects them from flies and dust. In loading the capper, trip it to discard the first cap. This cap has been exposed and may not be perfectly clean. Next, load the hooding machine. Now turn on the filling and hooding machine switches and begin bottling. Clean bottles are kept inverted until they are used to prevent dirt from falling into them. Never touch the lip or inside of clean bottles with your fingers. Always give the bottles a quick inspection for cracks, chips, or dirt. A mechanical capper makes it unnecessary to handle the caps by hand. Hoods like these are one way of protecting the pouring lip of the bottle from dirt. Inspect each bottle to be sure it is properly filled, capped, and that the bottle is not chipped or dirty. Reject bottles that are not completely filled or are imperfectly capped. Since you always contaminate the bottles when you remove the cap, pour the milk into a can for reprocessing. Use of a dolly keeps the cases off the floor and you can wheel the full cases directly to the cold room without any lifting. The temperature of the milk must not be allowed to rise above 50 degrees at any time after pasteurization if the growth of bacteria is to be prevented. Except in very cold weather, ice the milk before delivering it to the customer. This milk has been pasteurized, cooled, bottled, and capped. You have taken great care to protect it against every possibility of contamination. You have the satisfaction of knowing that you did your job well. You can send this milk from your plant with the knowledge that it is safe milk.